well, it might look sunny. Well, it is sunny, <laughs> but it isn't really all that warm. So I'm getting on with my one of those little maintenance jobs. This one is, um, the winches need serviced. They haven't been done for a couple of years. And your principal maintenance tool for these, these are Harkin winches, as you can see if I spin it round. Harkin. Principal maintenance tool is this thing, large screwdriver. Um, we'll see. It just comes apart one screw at the top and then everything's inside. Now the danger is that things fall overboard, so to protect against that, I have in Best Blue Peter style repurposed a cornflakes box, which I have already cut the size. Look at that. Yay. So when my bits drop out, they should land in the cornflakes box. That's the plan. So, <laughs> take it back off again. So I'm just going to take it off. And all I'm going to do is clean the oils and grease out of the bell housing. Um, I'm going to reset this knuckle so that the cable pays off into the cockpit instead of shooting off where it currently does. Um, it can go anywhere. These are Harkin winches. The, the stripper is a solid metal thing. There's nothing in here, whereas the Lumars have some sort of plastic ring in here with a stripper in it. Um, or so I've seen. Apparently they can wear out, but with the Harkins you don't have that, so I'm hoping that will not be an issue. Inside here is mostly just bearings, a few little poles, tiny things on the springs. Mostly what you need to do is clean the old oil off them, put a dose of fresh grease on, a bit of oil on the poles, and you're good to go again. That's really it. They're quite simple to maintain. So with all that, let's get down to it. So that could go like so. and things on the boat next door. <laughs> A big power boat. Much as I don't want to, I'm going to remove this one, it's a backing plate. It doesn't want to come out so it's going to get the treatment. Here's the inner. And in here, you can just see the poles. Oh, there goes another fingernail. You can see the poles that click round and lock this rotor into place. But uh, one crisis at a time. Let's get these somewhere safe where they're not going to slide off the boat. It's a useless lubricant, but as a cleaner it's without power. Nothing beats this stuff for cleaning. Particularly when it comes to cleaning silicon. Oh. Oh, okay, it's coffee break time. I've got everything off. I have got this area here masked off because I will be putting silicon sealant on it and I repeat that, silicon sealant. 
Um, I will not be using Sikaflex or Marine Flex or anything that's adhesive because if I do, I will never ever get this off again. And that's not what it's about. This is going back on the silicon sealant to keep the water and weather out, but I do want to be able to service this again in the future and I need to be able to take it off. So the silicon sealant has been removed. The other items I have kept together in the orders in which they came off. So this was all the top section, this was the inside section. This goes on first, second, third, fourth, fifth. That's the sequence they came off in, that's the sequence they go back on, or rather the reverse of the sequence. I've still got to clean the bolts up. When I do clean them up, I will be treating them with Duralac, so that they don't react with the aluminium block that the Bavaria has installed in the hard point. And I will also be doing the poles with gear oil and the main body of this with a light synthetic grease. Now, you don't need tons of this stuff. You just need to give something to the surfaces where metal touches. That will be fine. So just a light thing of grease on here, on the outside of this. Um, gear oil on the poles, things like that. And that should be enough to keep this going for another couple of years. So I've just got to do that. These have been soaking in WD-40, work of the devil 40, for um, a while. So they should clean up nicely. Then they can be Duralact, put back in and the whole thing sealed up. Um, I didn't go through the cleaning sequence because I think if you have to sit and watch somebody taking greasy oil off things, <laughs> this is maybe not the project you should be attempting. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> taking the oil off is pretty darn dull. Ah, servicing winches is pretty darn dull actually, but let's get on it. It's just tedious and has to be done. And I've got three more of these to do. And I've been chatting to everybody who's walked past. Oh, hang on, got a butter going past. Okay, if uh, the perspective looks a little different, just because things are a little different. Um, first camera <laughs> ran out of charge a few minutes ago, so I've got to do this bit over again. But what I've done is I've got my mastic on there. I have a Duralac on these bolts, which is a um, jointing compound, which inhibits galvanic corrosion because the block, the threaded block in here is aluminium. These are steel, so when I put them together, there could be a, a possibility of corrosion. So, and of course I'm just making sure that it does actually spin. Today's job is to do the um, smaller winches. Now these are very similar to the larger winches that I've done. Um, the difference is that there's no secondary gearing on this. These winches are single direction, single speed. They don't have the gearing that's inside the main hub. These ones are a lot simpler. The main differences are no gearing inside the hub and on the outer perimeter of the, um, the winch itself there are two poles that engage the, uh, the actual bell housing. So this one's a lot simpler to clean. I don't need to lift the central shaft out and do all the rest of it. I can just give everything a good clean, a good wipe down, and just simply put some oil into it and I should be good to go. Well, <laughs> I think the phrase that comes to mind is famous last words. 
Um, when I took it off and I just rotated the uh, inner barrel, the inner shaft, I could hardly turn it. It was absolutely gummed solid. Uh, when I took the um, housing off and had a look at the shaft, it's got a huge amount of horrible, thick, sticky grease. It's lost all its grease properties. It's now just really a type of adhesive. So I've had to take the whole unit off. I suspect I'm going to have to do the other one. I've been on a boat long enough that I really should have known better than to say I think this should be straightforward because it looks what I thought was going to be like a half hour job, it's going to be an all day job. But, c'est la vie, it's life in a boat. So I've brought it down here where it's a bit warmer because it's quite chilly outside. And I'm just going to clean all the cogs off with um, Work of the Devil 40 and some cotton buds. And then I'll oil, grease the whole lot up, put some oil on the um, poles and put it all back together again. But, bleh. I'm not going to film the cleaning and the putting back together again because it's pretty much the same as the other one I did. The only difference is it turns out, which to my surprise, that there is actually a ratchet inside this because you can hear it if I turn it. And there's like an Allen key in the bottom so I'll get my Allen key set, I'll remove this cover and I'll have a look inside. I expect it won't be anything too spectacular. But cleaning all this caked on sticky goo off. It's going to be a kitchen cleaner, a scotch Bright proud thing and a ton of um, WD just to remove this. And if that fails I'll go buy more brake cleaner because that seems to shift everything. Ugh, what a mess. Well we're a month uh, away from departure and um, we're just doing a whole load of little jobs again. Um, so one of the things we're going to do today is we've got to order a new cable for this uh, microphone. It's got completely shattered. I've already started buying in uh, little bits of food. Like these little curry pots are really great for me and Bev because they just do two. Um, and um, I make sure all the bedding is clean. Um, I do wash the bedding a bit more often than the uh, thing once a month but you know I just like to make sure all my bedding's clean. So how's our ordering getting on Bev? <laughs> the ordering, oh my lord. Oh I love the ordering. Right. Uh, well the problem we have is as Gaynor pointed out recently our microphone is it works and the radio works uh, but the, the, the rubber is, is perishing. The thing is we are scuppered by this little connector. This is a very odd connector and it's very hard to get, but we did find one. Oh yes, we found one. We find one. And it turned out that the delivery costs were nearly as much as the connector. Then there was VAT on top. Yeah. Uh, then we have to order a cable. Uh, we have to get a few more other bits and bobs to do in. We then have to take this apart and solder it all together. And at the end of that, there's no guarantee we'll have a working radio. The costs were getting close to hundred and something quid by the time we added them all up and a new radio is 170. So the obvious logic there is is this really worth the effort to repair? Yeah just for one connector it's ridiculous it like is. I say but um, thank you then thank you in port duties and that. <laughs> yeah definitely don't buy it from America. <laughs> the we tried buying we tried buying this part from the US, so the FedEx cost of this one part to the UK from the US was $250 <laughs> for FedEx and import duties <laughs> for one little plastic part. We now, found a UK supplier that was a bit cheaper on the delivery, but still. Still, still costs a lot. Now, the cable itself, this bit, the bit that's falling apart because... It's shattered. It's shattered. I think I just shattered a little bit when I did that. <laughs> I was going to say it's the little... Uh, yeah, anyway, this cable here is six pounds. Eight pounds including delivery for the cable. So that's the really cheap bit. So the problem is that we can get a, a new radio for 170 odd quid, but all the modern radios are up button and down button. So if you're in channel 16 and somebody wants you to go to 18, it's two up presses, no problem. If you want to go to... Somebody says, and they do say, go to the small boat channel on 6-7, You've got about 50 presses to get there. Your thumb will be numb before you arrive. Now, they, I'm sure that they have memory just because, like, our... Um, our handheld. On the handheld does memory, and you just go up and down through the memory. Yeah, but it's still a pain in the backside. Yeah, whereas what we like to do is just, just press the... Six, seven, and you're there. You're done. It's brilliant. 
So we've hit upon a new solution, which is a bit drastic, but it has the potential of being extremely money efficient. <laughs> we we've, need to be money efficient on this boat. We have ordered up the curly cable for eight pounds thirty eight, including delivery. Yay! Yeah. And we are going to cut this one here because we already have the connector. We don't need a 250 FedEx charge to get this here. <laughs> we already have it. It's here. So we're going to take the new microphone cable and this microphone cable. We have already opened this up and had a nosy inside and we only actually need three of the seven wires. So we are going to do some soldering and connect our new cable to this thing because it's all it's all a molded piece. You can't get it apart. We're going to cut the cable, solder our new one on, open this up solder the other end of the cable and la -dee da we will hopefully have a working radio for eight pounds and eighty pence 38 pence if we bugger it all up then we can go out and buy a new radio for 170 quid and but, that's the decision we've made is the fact that i'm thinking about the fact that um i want to be on salty last for at least another 10 years um you know so over that time it's not um I don't a bad to... investment. Yeah. But... but it's just the fact that we do like the fact that we can just key in the numbers. We like and... the radio we've got. Yes. We do like that radio. Um, if we have to get a new radio at some point, because that one goes work clunk, then we have to get a new radio at some point. And we would get a standard horizon because we know it fits the hole. Yes, we've got that sorted. We've got that sorted out. But for now, there's just going to be a pair of clippers going snip. And there's going to be a bit of cable jointing. Yeah. And with a bit of luck... All will be good. We will update you on that when the cable comes. Yay!